Hello everyone and welcome to the Greater Manchester HIV Testing Week webinar and we, have, we are joined by an array of hosts today from all over Greater Manchester and um, my name is India Henry, I'm your moderator for today so please do feel free to ask us any questions and um, interact with us the best way you can. Um, so this um, webinar will be uploaded onto our social media platforms. So please do share and talk about what you're comfortable sharing. Um, due to like confidentiality and privacy, we are unable to um, filter out the conversation. However, the chat function is um, available for panelists and attendees. If you have any questions, please drop them in there. So let's talk about who's here today. Um, so, Great Manchester HIV Testing Week is for community leaders, charities, barbers, hairdressers, faith leaders, GPs, sexual health services and all stakeholders um, throughout Greater Manchester and we're really hoping people to support us throughout this week. Um, so, we are the PASH Partnership and PASH um, has founded the first Great Manchester HIV Testing Week um, which is taking place from the 16th to 22nd of November. So today is our first day. And what that means is that we are encouraging Greater Manchester residents to test for HIV and to not their HIV status and engage with services. Um, and this is about our initiatives for people to lead a healthy and happier life by knowing their HIV statuses, but also as well being confident with their status and knowing where they can go for support. Um, so Greater Manchester has become a fast track city and that is a global partnership between cities that have the ambition of ending all new cases of HIV within a generation by reducing transmission, late that HIV diagnosis and eventually a new diagnosis of HIV. The HIV Let's Sort It Together campaign has been working towards Greater Manchester's ambition for, of ending all new cases of, of HIV within a generation through promoting HIV testing, prevention methods such as condoms and lube, PEP and PrEP, and HIV manage management through medication. So we will go through that a little bit later on as well. Um, so this November, we will focus on testing and encouraging people to know their statuses. And this is a great opportunity to get tested and encourage others to test for HIV from the comfort of their own home as we are in a national lockdown, I'm sure everyone's aware of. Um, so throughout this week, we're gonna get more people testing and talking about the HIV statuses, and we are focusing on self-sampling test, um, which is a finger prick test, which people can do in the comfort of their own homes. So our panelists today will be talking about um, lots of different um, aspects of the PASH partnership, so we have BHA for Equality here, um, LGBT Foundation and George House Trust. So I'm going to our panellists are going to start by introducing themselves. So we have Emma um, from BHA for Equality. Emma, would you like to share with us who you are and what you do? Hi, my name's Emma. I'm a programme lead at BHA for Equality. So I oversee the operational um, aspects of the project at BHA. Great. Elizabeth? Hi, I'm Elizabeth. I'm for BHG for Equality as well. I'm the sexual health advisor and HIV testing lead. So um, it's to check and uh, to assure the quality of the testing on PASH. Great. So Elizabeth, um, can you tell us a bit about BHA? What, who is BHA and what do we do? <laughs> so um, Emma will start uh, explaining uh, um, what is the campaign it's about. Uh, so BHA uh, itself, it's an organization that works more with VME communities. Um, so now we are prompting people to test for HIV. And to understand better what is this campaign, Emma will um, present what is uh, Greater Manchester HIV mm -hmm. Testing Week. I'm just gonna share the screen. Great. Just before you do that, Elizabeth, can we just have um, Patrick, can you introduce yourself, please? 
I do, and I'm Patrick Baxter. Um, I'm a sexual health officer for LGBT Foundation. Um, my work is diversity and inclusion, so I do a lot of community engagement with different LGBTQ um, plus groups. Um, as an organisation, we provide uh, programmes and services to all LGBTQ uh, people, so that maybe substance misuse, uh, counselling services, and um, we have a trans programme, women's programme, for example, Pride and Practice, which is an um, uh, accreditation system for um, different GPs and medical practices. Um, as I said, a lot of my work is community engagement. Um, as a sexual health team, we, we do testing and all sorts of events, uh, education and information. Uh, delivered to all LGBTQ plus people and also men who have sex with men. Thank you, Patrick. And Paul, can you introduce yourself? Please? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, Paul Fairweather. I work for George House Trust. <clears throat> I manage our Positive Speakers project and I work with a great group of volunteers and we run training sessions um, <clears throat> talking about living with HIV and answering questions. GHT is the main organisation supporting people living with HIV in Greater Manchester. Thank you. And just to make everyone aware, this um, webinar will be around 45 minutes. Over to you, Elizabeth. And now, is it cool? No. Emma? Um, if you can take it back, please, to the beginning. Yeah. No, to the further to the beginning. Thank you. Okay, so I want to go over a little bit about the um, campaign um, that we've got, um, exciting campaign for HIV testing week. So um, the HIV, let's sort this together. So you may have seen this campaign is a Greater Manchester um, uh, campaign and it's about the ambition of ending all new cases of HIV within a generation um, and the campaign um, gives us the option to promote key prevention messages such as HIV testing, prevention methods such as condoms, lube, PET, PrEP and HIV management through medication, U equals U, um, so supporting people to become undetectable um, meaning untransmittable and Paul's going to speak about that a little bit more in detail later on. Next slide please. So the campaign is um, it's a sort of like warm friendly campaign um, and it's quite inviting. Um, it's not a patronising campaign um, for health information but we want it to be informative and it's peer-led so um, many of the people that you see within the campaign are residents of Greater Manchester um, and they either work in the HIV prevention sector or they're living with HIV or they've accessed or used some form of HIV prevention method. So it's real people which helps give it a nice community feel. Next slide, please. So um, the campaign, you know, motivates residents of Greater Manchester to take charge of their sexual health um, and really to plan, you know, help them plan for a safer, safer sex, a more enjoyable sex life in a number of ways. Um, so we have this badge, uh, Test, Manage, Prevent, and that outlines some of the key um, strategies for sexual health um, to enjoy, a, um, you know, a good, a good sex and safer sex. So we've got the test, well, we've got the test, which is about encouraging residents to test for HIV and to test on a regular basis. Uh, many people may never have tested before, so we encourage those that have never tested before to also test, um, get tested, and those to test on a frequent or regular basis, depending on their needs. And then uh, manage, so that's, you know, then the manage aspect is about, um, the you know, advising those that are positive for HIV, how to manage their HIV treatment, and to receive support to, um, to reach undetectable. The prevent is about informing and encouraging people to take up a range of prevention methods such as post PEP, PrEP, condoms and lube. Um, and obviously those that kind of, there is a wide range of prevention methods and they may um, change for people depending on their circumstances. So um, condoms and lube can be effect effective when combined with something like PrEP or sometimes people might want to use PrEP or 
um, and, and then test regularly. So it's about that combination approach. Thanks, next slide. So there's a range of um, people, as I said, it's a peer-led campaign and we thought it's really important to have those um, people talk about their options that they've used um, to help um, either remain HIV negative or to manage um, their HIV. Um, so if you just want to flick through some of these. So each one either looks at a particular method that someone's adopting. Um, <clears throat> we have our own India who was introduced at the beginning talking about testing there. Um, next slide. And um, yeah, so it's really great to have a wide range of people involved. So the campaign, um, it's our fourth, uh, it's the fourth phase of our um, campaign and it's got a wide range of digital assets that can be used. Um, it's got a great opportunity, as was said earlier, to get tested um, and to encourage others to test for HIV. And obviously we're trying to encourage those to continue testing, but from the comfort of their own home under these current circumstances. And through the week, we want to increase the number of people who um, are testing for HIV and the number of people that know their HIV status. That's a key strategy for us to work towards that ambition of ending all new cases of HIV. We know that there are some people that are living with undiagnosed HIV and therefore it's those people, if we can encourage them to get tested, who will then be aware of their status and be able to access treatment. So there are a number of places that you'll be able to access um, tests. Um, so we've got the sorthiv.org.uk forward slash order hyphen test, where people will be able to order a, a test through there. There is also other options during that week. Um, you also have, you know, access to your local sexual health clinics, but we also advise, you know, ring ahead. Don't just um, go for a, a uh, walk in drop in please call ahead just to check what the current available services are um, and how they might be operating at this time but all sexual health clinics can offer you a HIV test and a full screen you've also got a national um, testing where you can order a postal kit through there and that's free te free testing .hiv. Um, so you can order a test there and order a test through um, sort HIV so there are a number of options um, so it's nice to know that people have a choice to choose whatever they feel the most comfortable with. Also um, testing with a GP is another option but again please contact your local GP to find out how what services they're operating and how they're operating them. Okay next slide. So we've got a part of our campaign at activation, these are some of the key um, assets. So we're using a lot of digital assets. So we've got things like posters, email signatures, web banners, social media messaging, logos, waiting room screens um, for anybody that's, um, you know, a, a GP or a pharmacy. So that's great. You've got something for your screen, social media messaging. So it's a whole range of um, assets to activate the campaign for this for this week. We also have a short video, a 30 second video, which we're going to try and um, share. Is that India or Elizabeth that's got the link? India. Sure. We recommend testing quite regularly if you have different partners. If you want to do it at home, you can order a self-sample kit. You just give yourself a little finger prick, you put it in a small vial and you send that off to the lab, get a result. It's usually within about two weeks. Testing is important because it's not just knowing your own status it is knowing and caring about other people, really. By knowing our status, you're doing the best thing for yourself and for others. HIV, let's sort this together. Okay, thank you. And if we just go back to the uh, presentation. So that, that's a short 30 second clip. There's also a 60 second clip video as well that's available. Um, Okay, so so 
So just back on a, a slide, please, Elizabeth. Okay, so how can you get involved in activating that campaign? Um, so all those resources are available for a Dropbox link, which Elizabeth can send out after this meeting. And anybody that's part of our stakeholders as well can be added to um, the promotional list um, to receive all those materials. So we want you during this week to use the hashtag GMHIV testing week and hashtag sort HIV to promote that across um, social media channels. You know, share the campaign on your those channels and through any internal communications. Share with service users and community members about, about HIV Testing Week and where they can access that information about HIV um, and how they can order those, those testing kits, such as through the sorthiv.org.uk um, website. You can use those promotional materials, which are all um, available through the Dropbox link. So we've got print ready posters, flyers, like I said, waiting room screens, so a whole host of digital media assets. So, you know, use what you feel comfortable, use what you feel um, will suit your social media channels. And we've also got um, articles about the campaign and the Greater Manchester HIV Testing Week. So there's briefing sheets as well, which outline the overview of everything and some key messages. Next slide, please, Elizabeth. So key social me media messages. So for example, it's time to test order a home HIV testing kit today and have the results in two weeks. So we've got a whole host of images and banners that you can use on social media with a whole range of different models um, talking about different um, aspects of um, HIV prevention. And we find it's quite effective when you use those social media messages with um, the um, campaign material so the images so it has more impact and the briefing sheet that's available for people has actually has a list of some of the key social media messages that you can give out so they're already designed for you if you want to access them next slide so what are the key benefits for you, for you so in promoting the campaign? So I think it helps start a conversation about HIV and HIV prevalence in Greater Manchester. Um, we find that, you know, when people are given the opportunity to start that conversation, it can be very rewarding and people can discover and learn new things um, that they weren't perhaps previously aware of. So it's great, it's great in terms of awareness bringing and understanding also the ease of, of testing um, is quite important. It's about simplifying it and making testing accessible um, and, and, and easy to do. It's about improving, I guess, you know, you will be contributing to improving the health of Greater Manchester residents um, by encouraging them to know their HIV status. Um, if people are aware, if they're undiagnosed and then they become diagnosed, they can access treatment. Um, and with under sort of like manage, manage, you know, that management of their treatment, you know, they live, their longevity, longevity of life is the same. However, if someone is living with undiagnosed HIV and they're not aware of it, it they can unknowingly transmit it on um, other people, but also it can impact their own health. So the earlier somebody tests, the better their health outcomes. And also you will be contributing as well to being part of that ending all new HIV transmissions within a generation, um, which is part of that greater Manchester ambition. Next slide. So I just want to leave you with that. HIV, let's sort this together. Um, and I hope you um, feel that the campaign, campaign has some aspects that you feel that you'll be able to access and share among your, your followers or in the community. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. That was great. Um, I think we're going to move on to Elizabeth now as well. Yeah. Just... So we are talking about um, prompting people to do HIV test and we like to talk also how HIV impact our communities and specifically uh, BAME communities and LGBT communities as they are most uh, impacted by and disproportionately impacted by HIV and why it's important um, them to test. Uh, so uh, talking 
as BHA for equality that talk, uh, that um, do a work uh, more specific with BME communities for Black African and Asian communities. Um, I would like to start uh, sharing some data about how uh, the HIV has an impact uh, in BAME communities. And um, some of the data says that the most, and this, this is the very recent data, uh, estimates that um, around one, one, 200 people living with HIV in UK in 2019, and of these, around 6,600 are undiagnosed, so do not know their HIV positive. And um, not knowing about their or having a late diagnosis, it's about not knowing at least around three to five years. And this increased the likelihood of uh, uh, heal health, preventing death, and uh, also people are continuing transmitting uh, HIV. Of the 1,559 heterosexual people diagnosed with HIV last year, 37% were Black African men and women. And in the Northwest and Greater Manchester, we are focused on this uh, HIV testing week in Greater Manchester, heterosexuals were more likely to be diagnosed late. And uh, by ethnic group, Black uh, Africans were more likely to be diagnosed late as well, compared with the white population. And that is 57% uh, for Black Africans. Uh, in Greater Manchester, it's around, uh, estimated around 7, 745 people that are unaware that they are living with HIV. So it's a big impact for our community. The numbers shows a lot. We try to, to understand better why there's numbers of uh, such high and so late diagnosed that really impacts the health of our communities. And one of the big uh, problems that affects our community is stigma. And we really need to break the, the, the cycle of the stigma because the stigma leads to discrimination, silence, ignorance, fear. And we need to break this, uh, this this cycle. And stigma has a harmful effect. One of the ones of the harmful effects is increased risk of acquiring HIV, uh, non-disclosure of the status, avoidance of health service, and also avoiding the HIV testing. So we need to spread the word to our communities that is important to test. And um, Emma already um, said some of the ways that you can test. There's a, a lot of different options that you can uh, test, and then you can choose the way. And it, today it's, it's very easy. Um, you can go to the GP sexual health clinics, or remember that we do the COVID-19 most of the service providers will first ask you to participate like in a telephone or video consultation. So it's best you to, 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 um, to phone first to know and probably will discuss your needs as well for the HIV testing, just to avoid uh, and to, to minimize the potential of spread of COVID-19, of course. Uh, the service for BAME community specifically, uh, um, are tailored and uh, BHA offers a different numbers of service as uh, for example uh, um, in the prevention side we you it's easy just can go on the website and order condoms and lube just go to our, the website BHA the bha.org.uk um, BHA also offers in the moment, uh, information and advice, I just need to send an email and we can contact you back uh, by email or by phone. There's just, you can leave your, your telephone contact and we contact you back and we'll discuss and uh, we'll give you any advice or information that, uh, about your sexual health. And also you can order online. You can order for BME communities, you can order, order in our website so all BME from Greater Manchester 18 plus can order uh, the home HIV test from our website the bha.org.uk 
or sorthiv.org.uk. There's other options. I'm already talked about the free testing. Um, so these two uh, testing the from our website and sort HIV, it's it's easy as well. It's just a finger prick. It's a dry blood spot. You put in the cart. You send it to the Northern Health uh, Sexual Health Clinic that will process your results for HIV. Um, and then you'll know the, your results in two or three weeks. So we hope people, it's easy nowadays to test. So we hope people um, just order and know the ways that they can test because the knowledge is power, is a way to prevent and to be more healthy. Great, thank you. Um, so I think just based on time, we'll probably ask questions towards the end. So I think we'll move on to Patrick now. So Patrick, are you ready? <laughs> Is Patrick here? I can't see him. Yeah. yeah. Hi, sorry, I was on mute. Um, hi, I'm Patrick from um, LGBT Foundation. I work in sexual health for uh, LGBT Foundation. I just want to talk a little bit today about um, testing and the possible effects of COVID-19 and the period that we've gone through the, the sequence of lockdowns on testing provision. Um, Firstly, I just want to talk about the importance of testing. So I have a few slides that have been taken from the Public Health England um, summary of uh, the results from last year. So these are the figures for um, that were uh, gauged from all the sexual health clinics uh, from last year on where we stand with um, HIV. Can I move my slide on? Do I have that? Or does... I don't seem to be able to move my slides on. India, can you do that for me? Um, I can maybe select slides and I've just made your host, so maybe that should. Okay. I can share yours, but I have the, the red one. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be moving. The wonders of <laughs> online. Indeed, indeed. Um, um, just bear with us a second and we'll try and sort this. Yeah, I seem to be just frozen completely. Let me stop share for a second. You can do that again. Uh, uh. Apologies for this, everybody. And yeah, my slides are, uh, are frozen completely. I can't seem to move on. Um, I'll just share the screen then. Don't you guys scan? Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, just um, if we can go on to the second slide. Yeah. Okay, so one of the reasons why we need to test and um, both Elizabeth and um, Emma have talked about prevalence um, in Greater Manchester. So um, uh, Manchester as a borough has uh, what's called extreme prevalence. So that's um, 6.2 in every thousand people living with HIV. And um, Salford is, is um, getting close to extreme prevalence and that may have, to have something to do with, self, um, with, with economic matters. It's getting more difficult to, uh, to live in Manchester for price of uh, accommodation. So people are moving more to other areas and with that prevalence will rise. Um, you can see all the other all the other areas have uh, have a high prevalence. So, um, in a whole, Greater Manchester is an area of the UK that has quite high prevalence rates. So, it's very important that people test to know their status. Um, at LGBT Foundation, our testing service, um, I, do, I always describe describe us as a sexual health and well-being service. So, when people come to test with us, uh, we talk about um, you know the, their their sex life, and it's about basically having discussions around. It's not about saying all oh, the type of sex you shouldn't be having this type of sex. It's about encouraging people to have the, the, the best sex that they can have in the safest possible way. And um, some of our previous speakers have, have spoken about stuff like PrEP, PEP, 
Um, so antiretroviral medications, so that's sometimes referred to as treatment as prevention. So it's about ensuring that people are, uh, A, know their status, um, and B, um, you know, have the right provisions. That might be condoms and lube, that might be PrEP. PrEP. Um, just over 250 uh, diagnoses are made a, a year in um, Greater Manchester. That's quite high uh, in, compare, in comparison to other regions. And as somebody else has said, um, there's, we are aware that there's probably about seven, uh, 745 people who are living in HIV and unaware of their status. So a lot of the, the campaign this week, uh, National HIV Testing Week, is to try to uh, maybe reach those people who aren't testing and find out the reasons why they're not testing. Um, and a lot of the stuff that we've done um, prior to COVID with this, uh, this week, uh, both ourselves, LGBT Foundation and BHA for Equality, with support from George Health Trust, we would have went to diff different community centres, um, pharmacies, um, uh, sort of LGBT spaces, universities, and um, done outreach clinics. Unfortunately, this year due to COVID, that's not possible. So instead of that, we're, we're using um, different blasts, different types of campaigns, with webinars like this, workshops with different groups um, online to try and um, work to, to reach people who are perhaps not testing and find out the reasons that they're not testing. Could I go on to the third slide? There's a series of, um, of graphs. Um, now, the success of, of this approach over the years, not only uh, the community testing that both ourselves, LGBT Foundation and BHA do, um, alongside um, sexual health provisions like PEP, PrEP, treatment as prevention, condoms and lube, has, have meant that um, rates of um, HIV new diagnosis have been going down over the years. And this graph uh, refers to G, uh, GBM is gay, bi and men with sex with men. And then we have um, uh, black African heterosexual males and black African heterosexual women. Uh, uh, females. So you can see in all cases over the years, these, these rates have been going down. Um, next slide, slide please. Um, this is just another graph that basically looks at uh, the same population. This, so these are new diagnoses that basically um, were the diagnosis was first found in the UK and people who were diagnosed in another country and the effectiveness um, of treatment. Um, and then the next slide. So this is basically, th this chart is um, in line with uh, the end in HIV in a generation, which is the 1990s. So that basically means we want 90% uh, of people living with HIV to be uh, diagnosed. And of those 90%, uh, you want 90% to be on treatment. And of that 90%, you want 90% um, to be virally suppressed. So basically, um, in the UK at the moment, we're pretty much exceeding those targets and um, we still have like only 89% um, are virally suppressed. That means they've been on effective medication for longer than six months um, and their viral load, so that's the amount that the virus is reproducing in the body, is, is so low that they cannot pass the virus on to somebody else and Paul will talk a bit more about that in the end. Um, so I think, is, is there one more graph? I have to go on to the next slide. Yes. So this graph basically, this, this looks at um, in the UK the percentage of people that are undiagnosed. So 39% of people living with HIV are still undiagnosed. That's, that's a big concern for us. And that's why uh, campaigns like National Test, uh, uh, Testing Week and sort.hiv uh, exist. It's to kind of reach that 39%, uh, that which is nearly 40% of people who are still undiagnosed. Um, so uh, there's 21% that are not retained in care so that, that basically that's uh, people who are not yet on treatment. Um, so yet again, we want to find out for what reason that maybe they're not on. There could be many psychosocial and economic reasons um, and, and, and psychological reasons, maybe why somebody do, it gets a, po a, a positive diagnosis, but doesn't want to, to begin treatment. And there can be all sorts of complicated reasons for that. Um, then you have 13% who are on treatment um, with a viral load. So that suggests maybe they're just at the start of treatment and the, 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 the antiviral medication hasn't taken effect to such an extent that they have a suppressed viral load. And then um, we have on treatment and no viral load reported. So that's not kind of quite sure what, what, that, what that statistic really means. Um, Paul might, might have a bit more of an idea about that. Um, a lot of what I want to talk about with these three graphs is what's not said. Um, so when, when the graphs that mentioned, um, you know, gay, bi and men who have sex with men, 
black African uh, men and black African women. Um, there's a lot of groups that not, are not covered in, that in those statistics. So what about LGBT women, um, trans men, trans women, are they referred to in the, in the gay, bi and men of sex with men? And um, we don't know. It's not. It's. It doesn't. It doesn't stay. It doesn't break down the the, the that that to the to that detail. And um, non-binary people. So the um, and also British South African people and migrant groups. We know that. Um, for for instance, uh, British South South Asian. Sorry, not South African. Uh, South Asian. Uh, have low prevalence rates. So there's low rates of um of HIV prevalence in the, in that community. But there's very high rates of, uh, of late stage diagnosis. So late stage diagnosis is when somebody has been living with HIV for quite a long time, but, but has never been tested. Therefore, they don't know that they, they, they have HIV and that they've contracted HIV. And therefore, the healthcare um, outcomes for, for, for these individuals are quite poor because uh, we know that the, the earlier that you get tested and, and get on treatment, the better the health, healthcare outcomes, more likely you're going to have a suppressed viral load, and therefore be undetectable, um, which is all sorts of other healthcare benefits. Um, so what about COVID? Uh, so if we could go on to the next slide, please. So we got two rather long quotes uh, for you there, and uh, I'm not going to read them out. We can maybe read them while, uh, while I'm speaking. So since lockdown, um, there has been quite a, an impact on um, sexual health testing services. Um, prior to lockdown, LGBT Foundation, we ran uh, three clinics a week. Uh, so we had on Mondays and uh, on Saturdays, uh, point of care testing. So that was a rapid HIV test. So somebody would come in, get a fingerprint test and get the result there and then in a minute. And it had a window, those tests had a window period of 12 weeks. So we would uh, be able to tell somebody their HIV status accurate to 12 weeks ago. Um, we also on a Friday ran a full screening clinic. So we would test for HIV, we would do a point of care test. We would also do a dry blood spot that tested for HIV with um, a window period of one month. Um, and uh, syphilis, uh, three months, hepatitis uh, B, three months, uh, uh, one month and hepatitis C three months, and then we do uh, chlamydia and gonorrhea. Um, since lockdown, we have not been able to do face to face testing, so that is a concern for us, obviously. Um, also, mainstream services, so your, your, your GUM clinic, your sexual health clinic, um, have seen considerable reduced capacity because a lot of the staff have been redeployed to deal with COVID. So, quite a lot of people are in testing. The two quotes that are, uh, that are mentioned here, one is from um, the National AIDS Trust and uh, then there's, there's a, a quote from Debbie from uh, Terence Higgins Trust. And they're talking about some of the, the effects that COVID has on, on different communities. And we know the healthcare outcomes for, um, for people of colour um, in relation to COVID have, have been pretty poor. So that will extend, unfortunately, to, to HIV and testing and outcomes for HIV and other SDIs. The other, quote, the other quote is basically talking the, about the effect, not only of testing, but the rollout of PrEP, so that's pre-exposure prophylaxis, uh, a treatment that you would take before and after sex to avoid acquiring HIV. Um, and there's also, there's also been an impact on people accessing this medication uh, during lockdown. Um, if we could just go on to the, uh, the, the final slide. So in response to this, we've been working very hard to find a way to reach our communities. And uh, thankfully now we have set up um, an online testing program. So basically um, every Monday and Friday and Saturday, so it's Monday from five to um, nine, um, Saturday, uh, Monday five to nine, uh, Friday five to nine, and Saturday one to um, five, um, you can um, go to uh, that website and you can um, book an appointment and we do a video um, well-being assessment with you and we sit down over video over Zoom and have a conversation about your sex life and then determine what that, what, what's the best test to send to you. We can also do a video tutorial with you so we can basically you know, um, show you how to use the kits that we send out. So that's the service that we offer as well. And then after three weeks, we can do a check-in call with you 
um, to make sure that everything went smoothly, that you got your results. If there was anything that was raised in the wellbeing assessment, because as I said, we, we consider ourselves a sexual health and wellbeing service, that can be brought up in, uh, in that appointment as well. Um, I've just shared a link as well, as well for the, the Northern um, Sexual Health Clinics. That's the main uh, uh, testing service in, in Greater Manchester. And one of the things I wanted to talk about was some of the difficulties of, of, of accessing um, testing there. Um, so the only, the only circumstances under which you can walk up, do, do a walk in to the, uh, the hat stage, for example, and um, there are four uh, conditions in which that's, that, that service is available. So uh, in case of sexual assault, if you're under 16, if you need to access PEP, so that's um, post-exposure prophylaxis, it's a medication you would take for 28 days. Um, if, you've, if you feel you've been possibly exposed to HIV, which you need to access within um, 72 hours of the possible exposure and for emergency contraception. Um, and there was some listed some other um, uh, methods of accessing uh, testing at the moment. Um, so the, the slides that I included of the graphs um, were taken from the, uh, the, the recent summary that uh, Public Health England uh, released. If you want to drill down a bit further into those figures, there's the fingertips um, uh, dot phe uh, dot co dot uk. I'll put in the chat and we can also put as a link to the video when it's broadcast. Thank you, Pat. That was great. You've raised some really good points there. Um, I'm hoping we can delve into them a little bit deeper um, later on. So, Paul, um, you know, a really important service um, to last. So, Paul's going to go over um, services. Where are you, are, Paul? Hi, thank you. Yeah, cheers. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm uh, Paul Fair with it. Um, I work for the George House Trust. I manage our Positive Speakers Project. Um, and I've been involved in working around HIV since the early 1980s. In 1985, I was one of six gay men who sat at Manchester AIDS line, which became the George House Trust. I was diagnosed as positive in 2000, so I've been living with HIV for over 20 years now. Um, I'll talk a bit about George House Trust, what we do. We're the main support in Greater Manchester for people living with HIV, and we provide a range of support. We have a great peer monitoring, a peer mentoring service, so which people living with HIV supporting other people. We have a welfare rights fund. Um, we have a volunteer counselling service. We've run specific services for women, for children, young people, for African people, for gay men. And we also do a lot of work in terms of training and challenging stigma and discrimination against people living with HIV. This is particularly what the Positive Speakers Project covers. I work with a great group of volunteers and we talk about living with HIV and we're really happy to answer any questions. In the last two or three years in particular, we focused on work with primary care. We had some funding to run uh, sessions in Manchester for all the GP practices, which includes a clinical presentation, either by a GP or a sexual health nurse, and then a positive speaker. And we've also doing a similar pilot at the moment with Hive in uh, Salford and in Wigan. So we're quite keen to work with primary care staff to do that. And also in the last couple of years, we've had a small amount of funding from public health in Manchester to do some work in schools. Um, so for example, just before the lockdown, we ran uh, 12 sessions in Wright Robinson, which is a school in East Manchester. We ran <coughs> sessions for all their year 10 groups. Time to have some water. Um, so that was, all the year 10 groups and great the feedback was really really positive um we've also run sessions for levington girls school for children high school for quite a lot of schools in the city and i'm keen that we build an ongoing relationships with all the schools that we work with so if we can run a session every year for the whole year group which is hundreds of young people i think over time that makes a big difference in terms of challenging stigma and discrimination and we found the young people are great in terms of asking questions and looking about awareness. So we talk about transmission, we talk about U equals U, but we also talk about our own experiences of living with the virus. Um, I'm just a bit conscious of the time, so I'll try, I won't go on too long. The other thing I wanted to talk about in particular, which has been mentioned is, is U equals U, which is undetectable equals untransmittable. So 
I think for those of us living with HIV, that's been a game changer. So it's now been absolutely proven beyond any doubt that if you've got an undetectable viral load and no other sexually transmitted diseases, you cannot pass the virus on. So I think for me and for many people living with HIV, that's really crucial because in terms of transmission, we're the safest people you can meet. And I think one of the things we're trying to do in the Positive Speakers Project is get that, get that message across to as many groups as possible. We also talk to BME groups, faith groups, LGBT groups, but everywhere we go, we talk about the U equals U message. So we're very keen to sort of talk to all sorts of different organizations. And I think for people living with HIV, that is the most important thing and is crucial in terms of challenging stigma against HIV. Um, I'm a bit conscious of the time, so I know we just finished a few minutes ago. So I'll stop there and are there any questions for, for any of the speakers? Thank you, Paul. That was great. And um, please, if you do have a question, please do type it. Um, but I'm going to start with you, Paul, with my question. And it is, um, what is the importance of support and how do you tailor your support to um, suit the needs of that individual? I think for us, one of the key things is when you're newly diagnosed, because even now, while well, the treatments are very different, it's still a huge shock for many people. So we're able to provide quite a lot of one-to-one -one support with people when they're newly diagnosed. We also run a course for people newly diagnosed, which looks not only at the medical information, but dealing with HIV, who to tell, to tell your employer, friends, or potential partners. And I think that immediate support is really important. We're really keen working with consultants to make sure that when people get a diagnosis, they're able to refer to George House Trust. And I think that's really crucial so that we can give that one-to-one -one and that group support when people are newly diagnosed. I think that's the time when it's really crucial to offer that. For some people, it's less of an issue than it was, but I think for many people, it's the stigma and the self-stigma and the isolation of living with HIV that can be more damaging than the condition itself these days. Thank you, Paul, that was great. Um, so Patrick, um, what is, so why is it important to test for HIV during this pandemic? Yeah, I think it's, I think it, it, it's very important uh, that we be aware that despite the restrictions, um, which would mean that would suggest that, you know, unless you're in, in uh, a, cohabiting or in, in, in a partnership with somebody, you shouldn't be having sex, um, however people will. Um, London Friend Anecdote uh, did uh, a survey at the start of lockdown, so in April, um, just a survey about um, uh, gay and bi men's um, sexual habits, and that survey suggested that the, the amount of sex that people were having went way, way, way down. However, we're, we're, we're seven, eight months into lockdown now, and people's resilience will be wearing, so you know, people are having sex. Um, and if they, if they can't access testing services, there's a huge concern there. So the figures that I showed, uh, I showed were from last year, and um, we've been doing really, really good work um, with testing and prevention to bring those rate, uh, rates of new diagnosis down. I'm just, I just have a concern that this year, when those figures come back for next year, for 2020, um, that we might see some spikes. So that, that's why the importance of um, the different tests and services that we've outlined this evening, that people do access them. Because we have to understand that people are going to be having sex and um, that there, there, might, there may be consequences to that. We also have some groups, um, for instance, people who engage in chemsex, who, are, who may be because of sort of poly addiction that goes with chemsex, that will need to be out there having sex and sometimes will, will, won't be using condoms and may not remember to take their HIV medication or their prep because they've been engaging in sexualized uh, drug use for a number of days. So it's really, really important that we reach those people and get, get, get testing um, and we use this, some of the services that um, have been kind of outlined today. So I presume when we upload this video as well, we can, we can put in a load of links of different places where people feel most comfortable to get tested because it, it's often the case that people will, will want to come to BHA to get tested because that you, you'll have understanding of the specific needs of the communities that, you, that you're testing. And for, for us, there'll be a lot of people who want to come to get a test with us because, you know, we'll have an understanding of the type of things that are going on in their life. But the most important thing is, is getting tested. 
Of course, thank you. And like I said, we will um, share links about online services. So my next question is for Emma. Um, so why is your campaign, well, why is the Hive campaign, I should say, targeted towards GM residents? And how is this different from other HIV campaigns? Um, thank you for the question. So I guess uh, we are working within the remit of the Greater Manchester area and the um, work that we do is for um, GM residents. But we wanted to create a campaign which I think was more localised um, and more targeted within the, all the 10 boroughs um, that form part of Greater Manchester. And I think it's peer led, which I think makes it a really important um, campaign because it makes it more accessible to people when people um, can visually see in some way people that re like reflect back to them who they might be or they can identify with them in some way so that it's much more representative because it's residents of Greater Manchester and it's peer led. Um, so it's those people with those real life experiences and backgrounds talking about um, whether they're talking about promotion of um, different HIV prevention methods or whether they're talking about, um, you know, how they manage their HIV treatment. It's all really key to, I think, um, um, you know, taking down those barriers around, around shame and stigma and what it means for somebody to be like, working in HIV prevention or accessing HIV treatment or HIV prevention methods. So it's a vibrant, it's colourful, it's, um, it's um, sort of like full of life. Um, and I think, for example, we have a whole range of people involved in the campaign, you know, from GPs to um, clinicians working in sexual health, to people working in the community voluntary sector, radio stations, to people that are living um, with HIV, um, to people that are using condoms and lubes as, as their main form of HIV prevention, to people who've accessed PEP or using PrEP. So I think it's, it's a very wide, wide um, and inclusive campaign, which I think makes it really different. So hopefully, you know, if you see it, you'll see some aspects of of, of yourself or a part of you reflected in it at some point. Um, and I think it really helps amplify as well those voices because I think sometimes HIV can be very low as a health um, issue can um, be very low down on the agenda for some people as a health issue just generally maybe people thinking of other health issues that we might be more familiar with so I think it helps amplify amplify it um, and I think it helps progress a, progress us somewhere so we realize that you know HIV is still here but we're working towards this ambition um, and I think it makes a real kind of nice shift from um, you know some of the older much older previous campaigns um, which kind of had that legacy for many people where HIV was very much associated with um, you know death and something like kind of doom and gloom so I'm talking about the campaign in the 80s and this one's much more colourful, vibrant, peer-led, much more positive and progressive in its messages. So, um, and I hope people feel that it comes across that, across that way as well. Thank you, Emma. And so Elizabeth, can you um, just explain to us really quickly, so how is the BME community uniquely impacted by HIV? So uh, BAME community are disproportionately affected by HIV and um, just to see in the numbers, 37% diagnosed of HIV around the UK are from the BAME communities for Black African communities and we just represent 8 to 10% of the population. Um, the another problem is the diagnosis that we are uh, late diagnosed. Di the late diagnosis is very high. And um, just uh, to have an idea, in 2019, um, the people, the 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 mortality rate of people um, that are uh, diagnosed late is around 23 to 1,000, and people that has um, early stage of diagnosis 3 to 1,000. Uh, so it's it's it has an impact on health. Um, just to to assure again. Um, HIV has, is very manageable now, so people, if you are in treatment, they can have a long life. Uh, so it's important to know the status. 
the other problem is the um, and the impact that it has it is the the stigma that I already talked about it and um, the other aspect that I would like to to um, highlight as well is that BAME uh, represents a diverse set of communities and uh, identities so it's sometimes it's, it's, it's hard for the self-identification so it's important to have like tailored service to the, these communities to increase the the um, the, the HIV testing and the access to the service so um, BHA uh, if you provide a, a service uh, more tailored for the BME communities and the LGBTF for LGBT communities also now in this great Manchester HIV testing week we are providing a testing tailored for these communities so we um, if you go in order in our website you can have also a all online coaching session of BHA or, or LGBTF where we can talk um, in a peer session as uh, Emma was saying so uh, I just want to, to appeal again for all uh, residents of Greater Manchester and all the community to spread the word of uh, uh, the importance of HIV testing and join our campaign of the Great Manchester HIV test week. Great, thank you. Um, so do we have any final words or comments from our attendees and from our panellists just before we wrap up? Patrick. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to pick up on what Emma said about the colourfulness of the uh, Sort of HIV campaign. I think it's really fantastic that it, it is peer led and it's community led and that people see themselves reflected in campaigns and that it there's a sense of joyousness about it as well celebration as well that you know and um, that is very very powerful in reducing stigma and i i think all three organizations have done a lot of work around trying to encourage members of our community to be sort of faces of of the campaigns and um, because when people see themselves reflected in a campaign they're much more likely to kind of to to, to seek out those services Great, thank you Patrick, that's a really nice note for us to end on and we've just got some thank yous coming in from our attendees so I would like to say a big thank you for our attendees for joining and a massive thank you to our panellists for being part of this and for really highlighting the amazing work that's taken part in Greater Manchester and you know let's sort, let's sort this together so please stay tuned for um, more information about Hive, LGBT Foundation, BHA for Equality and George House Trust. Thank you. I'm going to stop recording now.